And he said in the street, in the speech, excuse me, today 13 million black sons and daughters of our forefathers continue the fight for the translation of the 13th, 14th, and 15th amendments from writing on the printed page to an actuality. 15 million. We believe with them that if freedom is good for any, it is good for all. That we, may conquer, that we may conquer southern armies by the sword, but it is another thing to conquer southern hate. That if the franchise is given to Negroes, they will be vigilant and defend, even with their arms, the arc of federal liberty from treason and destruction by her enemies. Fifteen. Now the young king used his preternatural gifts and grace to masterful effect and won the competition. Twenty-two years later, King was still young, but a veteran by then in a hard-fought war for the soul of the nation that we refer to as the Civil Rights Movement or as the Freedom Movement. Twenty-two years later, his tone was different. He was still making arguments, intellectual arguments. He was still eloquent, but he grew more thunderous than poised. Righteousness overtook the formal call to reason. He had become unflinching, wise, and ever more insistent upon the moral urgency of the fight for freedom. And that's where I want us to sit today. In 1967, this very month, 55 years ago, Martin Luther King Jr. was in Jamaica with his wife and two friends. And in adulthood, on a number of occasions, he traveled to the Caribbean in the midst of the movement to write and to think. The previous year, really the previous six months in particular, had been challenging for him. Younger organizers had begun to reject his call for nonviolent resistance. Increasingly, they wanted to return to the earlier politic of armed self-defense. They chose the words black power over freedom now. Many rejected the clerical hierarchy, the church-like order of many civil rights organizations. And back in June, James Meredith, the man who had integrated Ole Miss, began a march. And the plan was to walk from Memphis to Jackson, Mississippi. And it was to promote black voter registration. And he called it the, a march against, against fear. And on the second day of that march, he was shot by a white sniper. And there was no more potent sign that nonviolent resistance too often seemed to mean that black people were supposed to submit to white violence. But organizers across the political spectrum went to complete Meredith's walk while he was hospitalized. And by the conclusion of the three-day walk, there were 15,000 marchers in Mississippi. And it was the largest civil rights demonstration in the history of the state. Now I mention that march because it was an important moment of solidarity like the moment we're in right now in this place. We've had extraordinary leaders come up on this podium and speak. You, we know they don't all agree on all the issues, right? But this is a moment of solidarity, like the March Against Fear. 